We continue today with chapter 13, The Peace of Heaven. Forgetfulness and sleep and even death become the ego's best advice for dealing with the perceived and harsh intrusion of guilt on peace. Yet no one sees himself in conflict and ravaged by a cruel war unless he believes that both opponents in the war are real. Believing this, he must escape, for such a war would surely end his peace of mind and so destroy him. Yet, if he could but realize the war is between real and unreal powers, he could look upon himself and see his freedom. No one finds himself ravaged and torn in endless battles if he himself perceives them as wholly without meaning. God would not have his son embattled, and so his son's imagined, quote, enemy is totally unreal. You are but trying to escape a bitter war from which you have escaped. The war is gone, for you have heard the hymn of freedom rising unto heaven. Gladness and joy belong to God for your release, because you made it not. Yet, as you made not freedom, so you made not a war that could endanger freedom. Nothing destructive ever was or ever will be. The war, the guilt, the past are gone as one into the unreality from which they came. When we are all united in heaven, you will value nothing that you value here. For nothing that you value here do you value wholly, and so you do not value it at all. Value is where God placed it, and the value of what God esteems cannot be judged, for it has been established. It is wholly of value. It can merely be appreciated or not. To value it partially is not to know its value. In heaven is everything God values, and nothing else. Heaven is perfectly unambiguous. Everything is clear and bright, and calls forth one response. There is no darkness, there is no contrast, there is no variation, there is no interruption. There is a sense of peace so deep that no dream in this world has ever brought even a dim imagining of what it is. Nothing in this world can give this peace, for nothing in this world is wholly shared. Perfect perception can merely show you what is capable of being wholly shared. It can also show you the results of sharing while you still remember the results of not sharing. The Holy Spirit points quietly to the contrast, knowing that you will finally let him judge the difference for you, allowing him to demonstrate which must be true. He has the perfect faith in your final judgment, because he knows that he will make it for you. To doubt this would be to doubt his mission will be fulfilled. How is this possible when his mission is of God? You whose mind is darkened by doubt and guilt, remember this. God gave the Holy Spirit to you and gave him the mission to remove all doubt and every trace of guilt that his dear son has laid upon himself. It is impossible that this mission fail Nothing can prevent what God would have accomplished from accomplishment. Whatever your reactions to the Holy Spirit's voice may be, whatever voice you choose to listen to, whatever strange thoughts may occur to you, God's will is done. You will find the peace in which He has established you because He does not change His mind. He is invariable as the peace in which you dwell, and of which the Holy Spirit reminds you. You will not remember change and shift in heaven. You have need of contrast only here. 
contrast and differences are necessary teaching aids for by them you learn what to avoid and what to seek. When you have learned this, you will find the answer that makes the need for any differences disappear. Truth comes of its own will unto its own. When you have learned that you belong to truth, it will flow lightly over you without a difference of any kind. For you will need no contrast to help you realize that this is what you want and only this. Fear not, the Holy Spirit will fail in what your Father has given him to do. The will of God can fail in nothing. Have faith in only this one thing and it will be sufficient. God wills you be in heaven and nothing can keep you from it or it from you. Your wildest misperceptions, your weird imaginings, your blackest nightmares all mean nothing. They will not prevail against the peace of God wills for you. The Holy Spirit will restore your sanity because insanity is not the will of God. If that suffices him, it is enough for you. You will not keep what God would have removed because it breaks communication with you whom he would communicate. His voice will be heard. The communication link that God himself placed within you, joining your mind with his, cannot be broken. You may believe you want it broken, and this belief does interfere with the deep peace in which the sweet and constant communication God would share with you is known. Yet his channels of reaching out cannot be wholly closed and separated from him. Peace will be yours because his peace still flows to you from him whose will is peace. You have it now. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to use it and by extending it to learn that it is in you. God willed you heaven and will always will you nothing else. The Holy Spirit knows only of his will. There is no chance that heaven will not be yours. For God is sure, and what He wills is as sure as He is. You will learn salvation because you will learn how to save. It will not be possible to exempt yourself from what the Holy Spirit wants to teach you. Salvation is as sure as God. His certainty suffices. Learn that even the darkest nightmare that disturbs the mind of God's sleeping son holds no power over him. He will learn the lesson of awaking. God watches over him and light surrounds him. Can God's son lose himself in dreams when God has placed within him the glad call to awaken and be glad? He cannot separate himself from what is in him. His sleep will not withstand the call to wake. The mission of redemption will be fulfilled as surely as the creation will remain unchanged throughout eternity. You do not have to know that heaven is yours to make it so. It is so. Yet to know it, the will of God must be accepted as your will. The Holy Spirit will undo for you everything you have learned that teaches that what is not true must be reconciled with truth. This is the reconciliation the ego would substitute for your reconciliation to sanity and to peace. The Holy Spirit has a very different kind of reconciliation in his mind for you and one he will effect as surely as the ego will not affect what it attempts. Failure is of the ego, not of God. From him you cannot wander and there is no possibility that the plan the Holy Spirit offers to everyone for the salvation of everyone will not be perfectly accomplished. You will be released and you will not remember anything you made that was not created for you and by you in return. For how can you remember what was never true or not remember what has always been it is this reconciliation with truth 
and only truth in which the peace of heaven lies. And from the workbook, lesson 104, I seek what belongs to me in truth. Today's idea continues with the thought that joy and peace are not but idle dreams. They are your right because of what you are. They come to you from God who cannot fail to give you what he wills. Yet must there be a place made ready to receive his gifts. They are not welcomed gladly by a mind that has instead received the gifts it made where his belong as substitutes for them. Today we would remove all meaningless and self-made gifts which we have placed upon the holy altar where God's gifts belong. His are the gifts that are our own in truth. His are the gifts that we inherited before time was and that will still be ours when time has passed into eternity. His are the gifts that are within us now, for they are timeless, and we need not wait to have them. They belong to us today. Therefore, we choose to have them now and know in choosing them in place of what we made, we but unite our will with what God wills and recognize the same as the being one. Our longer practice periods today the hourly five minutes given truth for your salvation should begin with this. I seek but what belongs to me in truth, and joy and peace are my inheritance. Then lay aside the conflicts of the world that offer other gifts and other goals made of illusions, witnessed to by them, and sought for only in a world of dreams. All this we lay aside and seek instead that which is truly ours as we ask to recognize what God has given us. We clear a holy place within our minds before his altar where his gifts of peace and joy are welcome and to which we come to find what has been given us by him. We come in confidence today aware that what belongs to us in truth is what he gives. And we would wish for nothing else, for nothing else belongs to us in truth. So do we clear the way for him today by simply recognizing that his will is done already, and that joy and peace belong to us as his eternal gifts. We will not let ourselves lose sight of them between the times we come to seek for them where he has laid them. This reminder will, we will bring to mind as often as we can. I seek but what belongs to me to, in truth. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. So today we sink inward to the peace of heaven. We sink past the dream of forgetfulness. We gently awaken from the sleep of dreams and death. Today we will see no conflict in the world because we see no conflict within ourself. There can never be a war between what is real and what is unreal. Today with the Holy Spirit's help we simply look upon the false as false. We see the linear cosmos for the falsity it is. It could never take the place of our holiness, of our divine presence. The past never offered anything. The future is imagined also without value of any kind. There is no darkness within, 
and today we see there is no darkness without. For what is without and what is within are one. Today we follow the Holy Spirit into this immaculate state of mind, invulnerable, transcending darkness, living, sharing, and radiating the light. Nothing can prevent what God would have accomplished from accomplishment. God's will is done. Today I seek but what belongs to me in truth. Today I seek the gifts that were before time was. Today all obstacles are removed. All meaningless and self-made gifts are seen for the falsity that they are. Today we reserve the Holy Altar for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Today we receive the gifts of eternity as we lay aside the conflicts of the world that seem to offer other gifts and other goals made of illusions. Today we release ourselves from the world of dreams and accept ourselves as God created us. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. God's gifts of joy and peace are all that I want. Amen. <laughs>